So the Wayland caution lights are still on, so I would expect possibly one more time around. Last beat feature for the Crate Racing USA, 604. Last chance. Put it in the show. Unless you're going to rely on a provisional. So final chance to make the dance if you're in a 604 Lake model. Let's show the starting box and we'll get ready to see the one to go. Crate Racing USA 604 locked in cars. If you want a shot at the racetrack, I need you in staging right now. Crate Racing USA Modified Sportsman. Modified Sportsman. This is your first call. You need to be headed to staging. Top three going to make the dance. Jake Harrell's in. Jake Knowles raced his way in. We'll have to look down the points, see if any of these drivers are eligible for any of those points for Visionals. If not, it'll go to the next qualifier in. Back to the BP Racing Lubricant Smooth Clean starting box. Here we go. B-Mate number two is underway. Smith will lead the charge. Man, Richie Stevens got a good run off the turn number one. Push the seven down the front straightaway. Top side comes Wing. Wing slows up, and they're going to say no go. No, the 12th car of Ace Claver right here in front of the box. And something is definitely awry in that machine. Looks like something might have mishapped on that 12 on the get-go. It definitely sounded awful. So definitely some trouble for Ace Claiborne, the Albany, Kentucky native. Trying to get it refired again. And we're gonna see, and there we go. Puff of smoke, I think that one's had enough. Yeah, he's telling him I need to push to be able to finish it off. So unfortunately the 12's weekend gonna come to a halt before it got started out of turn number four. So the Kentucky native will see his Ice Bowl weekend end. Hopefully didn't completely expire an engine. I hate to do that to kick off the 2024 season. Needless to say, we'll stack it back up and get ready to rock and roll. No laps completed, no harm, no foul for anybody else in the field. So it'll be Smith, it'll be Wayne. We'll try it again. Deja vu. Be main number two for Crate Racing USA 604 late models. Here comes Smith. BP Racing Lubricant. Smooth and clean starting box here. We're underway. Stevens got a really good start. He'll follow Smith to the bottom of turn 22. Slipping and sliding, making their way through. And Bailey Cardwell just passed almost half the field in one set of turns. Here comes the Strawberry Plains native right into the back of wing. Trying to get into the top three. Want to make the ice bowl. Pressure builds. Last chance to race your way in. Here comes Cardwell. You can see that left front locking up, trying to get that car to turn to the center of one and two. He'll do it again. Trying to make the top side of this track work. It did yesterday afternoon. Everybody else right now working at the bottom. Hugging the tires. Oh, and the seven's going to go way up. He's going to go around. Cardwell's going to loop it in one and two. And that will bring the wheel and caution lights on. Hey, you got to do something. You've only got 12 laps to make the show. And it's a little slippery on the top side right now. Bailey Cardwell, unfortunately, got up there. Climbed the back end. I wouldn't be shocked if the rear tires didn't come off the ground. And that kind of helped send that car around when he backed up into that fence. We'll look to see. As of right now, no harm, no foul. He's going to go right back to the tail of the field. Two laps officially scored. Two laps officially scored. So it will be the Dixie Double Final with Smith out front. Brian Smith, we've seen him a lot, especially in the Winter Shootout Series. I bet he's gritting his teeth when we go to Tazewell later on this year. 
He likes to race there. Creek flight back in the air. Richie Stevens, I'll tell you what, he's got a terrific launch in that double zero. Comes off turn four well. He'll go back to the bottom. Jake Payton trying to get Marty Lunsford off the bottom. Cardinal says, you know what? The top side didn't work. I'll try the bottom. Nose underneath the 88. Slip inside down into turns three and four. Leader comes off the of four. Brian Smith will show the way. He'll lead lap three. Here's the battle between Bailey Cardwell and Shane Payton in that 88. Up and over they go in one and two. They'll swap rolls. Payton's going to go to the inside at three and four. Cardwell will shut the door. He'll dive down to the bottom. Touch that lower line. Payton back up. Here's the 17. Machina Wing hitting Marty Lunsford. That's third and fourth on your screen. They'll go down the back straightaway right now. That would be your transfer spot. Lunsford trying to race his way in after a really good qualifying effort yesterday. Trying to hold on right now and stay close to Bailey Cardwell. Going to move him out to the bottom group. Come to the halfway point. Cardwell's trying to get back up to a transfer spot. He'll slide down into three and four. Tell you what, that grip that you can get in the center, if you can get a good run off the four, you can get a launch, and Bailey Cardinals did it twice. Here comes Lundford. He'll go door to door with him again off the turn number two. Down the back straight away and into turns three and four. Laps are starting to wind down. Seven laps are clicked, the wheel of caution lights have come on. The wheel of caution lights will come on. So I'm hearing the 88 went over the three and four. I totally missed that. If you watch the other end, you can't see the other end. So that's the disadvantage of only being able to see one way. So Peyton will come back to the racing surface. Right now, seven of our 12 laps are complete, just over halfway. Still plenty to race for. Remember, top three are going to make it into the Ice Bowl. Everybody else, if you're not one of those provisional eligible drivers, hey, your weekend is done. Load it up. Brian Smith back to the KRC power steering restart zone. Another good launch from Stevens. Here they come off of turn number four. We're back at it again. We ain't going to get right there, right to the back bumper. Can't make anything happen. I'll tell you what, Cardwell used that restart very well. He'll pressure Wing down into three and four. Strawberry Plains driver Bailey Cardwell is going to have Lunsford slip under him. Lunsford got a really good run off the turn three. Cardwell's going to have to go to the middle of the racetrack. This is for fourth and fifth. That means absolutely nothing if they can't get to that 17 car just in front of them. Out of turn number four, Smith will cross the strike. Nine complete. Next time by two to go. Cardwell's went back up to the top side to try to get a run. One final heave ho to try to race his way in. Now he'll slip to the bottom, try to get underneath the 17. Can't make it stick. Popsicle sticks in the air. Ryan Smith, Kentucky Dam, started on the point and not looked back. Right here's where the transfer spot is. There's third in the 17. 07 of Cardwell. He's one spot on the outside looking in, trying to race his way to the 33rd annual Ice Bowl. White flag in the air, no doubt about it. Ryan Smith's going to win this one with the transfer spot. One final set of turns. It's either going to be the 17 away, or it's going to be the 07 of Cardwell. Out of turn number four, it's going to be the driver all the way from Harrisburg, South Dakota, holding on to that final transfer spot. So he will go in. Bailey Cardwell will miss it by one. Lunsford will miss it by two. So the winner of B-Main number two out of Grand Kentucky, the Hinder Power Capital, Smith's Gunners and Siding, Smith Ceiling, Econo Cool Incorporated, who's your racing tire south, number seven, Brian Smith. So there, you have the B-Mains in the books. Provisionals will be sorted out. We can't tell you. Jake Carroll, he's in the show, as I mentioned that earlier. So B-Mains set number one in the books. Here comes the locked-in cars that are in the feature tonight. By the way, coming out onto the racetrack in this will be the winners of the last three ice bowls. I made a comment earlier. I actually did a poll. You can go to Facebook, go to Cody Early Dirt Track Announcer and vote on the vote on the poll I posted earlier. 
So the last seven ice bowls since 2016, you have to go back to 2016, the last seven have been won by a driver from the state of Tennessee. You can go look at that. Got a full list of those, starting with uh, Brandon Williams. And there after that, Tennessee has cashed in from Brandon Williams to Ronnie Johnson, Jason Welsh, and Corey Hatchcock. All those previous winners of the Ice Bowl, but Tennessee has took seven of them back to the Volunteer State. Go to the Facebook page and vote. Do you think that will continue today? Here come your locked-in cars. First car out onto the racetrack will be the 24 out of Clinton, Tennessee. That will be Anthony White, Jr. Anthony Wright, Jr. in the 24 will make his way down into turns one and two. Behind him in the 17 machine. That'll be the driver of Oxford, Alabama. That'll be Cruz Skinner. Cruz Skinner in the CBR house car. Behind him in the one. It'll be Jason Hyatt out of Oxford, Alabama. Down in the center of turns one and two will be the youngster out of Blairsville, Georgia. It'll be the mayor, 22 of Tucker Anderson. Behind him, the K-5. It'll be David Kay out of Lincoln, Alabama. In a one and two, a driver that picked up his first ever Crate Racing USA National Touring win last year. The 31, it'll be Tyler Millwood. Tyler Millwood in the 31. And the 14 down the back straightaway. That'll be Kate Brookshire out of Calhoun, Georgia. Here we go with what looks to be the only car is going to give it a test here in this practice run for the hot laps for the locked in cars for the 604 Ice Bowl feature. series this weekend a ton of great sponsorship going on with that we'll talk about a little bit of that as we go through as we get the lineup to you first rolling out onto the racetrack will be their first B main roughly I think four of them will make the show perfect attendance engine giveaway presented by twisted performance I like that feature winner the VP jug presented by Rogers fuels not qualifier race of course we'll talk about that later in the night we're gonna have that as well Here's your lineup for B-Main. Number one, Steve Pate in the 07 out of Heflin, Alabama. will go first. Don Jenkins second at Kingston, Georgia in the 51. It'll be Eddie Brannon out of Anniston, Alabama in the 99. He'll roll off third. Walker Greer in the W1. He'll go fourth. Jared Blackster out of New Bern, Tennessee in the 34G. He'll go fifth. Wayne Vinston, Herman, Alabama in the 5B. He'll go sixth. Mike Hand, Muscle Shoals, Alabama in the 69 will be seventh. Rolling off eighth out of Whitesburg, Georgia in the 1 to be William Blair. Randy Ziegler out of Columbia, Tennessee in the 76. He'll roll off 9th. Bruce Busby, Jasper, Alabama, 319, rolling off 10th. Trey Ellsbury, Temple, Georgia, the 2E. He will roll off 11th. Rolling off 12th, it'll be Craig Hopkins out of Repton, Alabama, the G17. John Carboni, Walker, Louisiana. He'll roll off 13th. One to go being given. Austin Burke, Zachary Matthews, and Tyler Watts expected to be the final starters here in B-Main number one. With the Crate Racing USA Modified Sportsman, 10 laps looking for top four to the big dance. Our top two round, swapped it on. Top two, go to the show. Wow, only two going to come out of this pressure at its highest. Down into one and two, it'll be a good run from Ziegler. He'll slide up the racetrack, but one's going to go around, and this could get, uh, wow. We only managed three in that pile, and I thought we were going to have more than that. That might have been Walker Greer. They got a little sideways to begin with. Loose up around that top side. There, there is just not a lot to lean on right now on the top side of the racetrack. So that will rack them and stack them back up. The Z15 of Zachary Matthews out of Oden, Alabama. Started 15th. He just kind of slid in there at the end. So we'll see if they can get them separated. We mentioned some of those great sponsors for the Tri-State Open Wheel Modified Series. KRC Power Steering, War Shocks, Performance Bodies and Parts, Top Cat Performance, TCC Total Custom Carburetors, 
A.J. Ferguson head and block repair, CFR performance parts and fabrication, all-star performance, Schaefer's old twisted performance and machine, just to name a few. So these modifieds, we've seen them, of course, for two days now. They like to go up there and get that top side, like to stretch this racetrack out. It's always good to have an open wheel modified class and your racing program because they stretch the racetrack out, widen the surface. Well, right now, that top side, as we saw Bailey Cardwell earlier in the 604, there's just not a lot of grip up there. He had a much wider Hoosier tire compared to the more narrower tire you're going to see on these open wheels. And he couldn't make it stick. Once again, race fans, make sure you get some of the official Ice Bowl merchandise. You can find it in turn one at the Talladega Short Track Merchandise Trailer. Make sure you check that out. Stop by and get some apparel and leave the short track with some merchandise from the Ice Bowl. So an official line back up and try it again. No laps complete. Top two. Top two going to come out of this first B. B main number two. You need to be ready. Modified Sportsman locked in cars. If you want to test it out, we'll give you a shot at some hot laps as I thought we were going green. Now the wheeling caution lights go out. Now we are really going to go green. So here we go. We'll try it again out of turn number four. Payton's going to show the way. He'll be on the bottom. Top side will be that 51 of Jenkins. Jenkins going to get around. He'll look back to the back bumper and thought he was going to try to slide him underneath. Ooh, and things got interesting back with the 99 of Eddie Brannon. They'll come off of turn number four. Lap number one is in the books. There you see Jenkins on the top side. The one that will be Walker. Got one up against the fence, 34 car. Jared Wagster going to ride the wall. We'll see if the wheeling caution lights come on. Oh, and around goes the 99 in a terrible spot. Eddie Brandon went around. He might have had a little bit of help. I caught that out of the corner of my eye. He might have had a little bit of help. He turned it around right in front of the entire field at turn number four. Losing the back spoiler of that machine. So needless to say, officially, two laps are complete. Taking four is one thing. Taking two, and you got 16 cars fighting for those spots, that's a totally different scenario. So they will work to get the lineup lined back up. By the way, a shout out to the RaceWise School giving a certificate for the fifth place feature finish in not only the modifieds are out there now, but also the 604s, the 602s, the super late models, the factory stocks, $399 value for that. So how about that? RaceWise School giving that gift certificate fifth place finisher in the features later on tonight. A lot of added incentive to these features throughout the weekend. Wheeling caution lights are out. We'll try it again. Two laps completed of our 10. Out of 
turn four. We'll try it again. Back down into one and two. Payton will show the way. Jenkins on the top side. And the 39, or 34 rather, of Waxter just kind of pushed up the track. Oh, a little bit of a shock. We got the tail end of the field slipping and sliding. Looks like they're still going to make it through. Here comes Jenkins. Jenkins in that black 51. The one car, that'll be Walker. Walker's going to go to the inside, trying to make it stick off of turn number two. Good drag race for second. That's also the transfer spot, for keeping up at home. Here they come off the turn number four. Boy, Jenkins went way up, and how did he miss the fence? Wow, he had enough grip to get that car back down the hill. And he's going to fall back about four car lengths, but in the meantime, we'll sort it out. Man, the 47 car. Is it 47? Something was going on there towards the tail end of the field. his way through and I want to say the 319 of Bruce Busby looks like that car's got something going on. Canny Wampus off of turn two is the best way I can describe it. He just did. 44 working the top side trying to make that cushion work. That's Austin Burke. By the way, he started 14th in this deal. Right now running fifth. Biggest mover of the race. Austin Burke in that 44 car. There you see the 51 Jenkins. Here comes Burke again. There you see top side trying to get it reeled in. That will just make this racetrack better. By the time the dirt car super weight models come up here momentarily. Now he's going to go to the bottom. He'll look to make a move on the 76 of Randy Ziegler. Didn't work at three and four. Top side, he'll try it again. It just gets such a good run off of turn two. Saw it yesterday. You can get that run off of turn two to make it happen. White flag, though, in the air. Final time for Steve Pate. Pate's had no problem as the wheeling caution lights have come back on. Wheeling caution lights have come on, and they do so for Bruce Busby on a chance for Georgia. He sits over there in the muck just off of turn number two. And just as we were getting ready to throw the checkered on this, caution's going to come out. That brings Don Jenkins, Randy Ziegler, and Austin Burke right back into the party. But Steve Pate so far has been untouchable in this one. White car doesn't look like it has any dirt on it. That amazes me. Look at that. As muddy as it is, the car's not even dirty. So they will work the lineup, get it dialed back up. Should be two to go here. Steve Pate's been out front. B-May number two, you need to be in staging. Dirt car, super late models. Start making your final adjustments. You'll be up after the modified feature lock-in cars. Get their hot lap session. Still trying to get the single file lineup dialed in. They will allow the Dixie Double File to start forming. It'll be the one car of Walker Greer. He's going to decide whether he goes top or bottom. There we go. Everybody kind of slides in. Don Jenkins will go on the bottom. Unfortunately, at 44, well, I've got a feeling the wheeling caution lights. Yeah. Don Jenkins said when we get to three or four, we're going. So they will stall it back up. There's good starts, there's really good starts, and then there, there's those. So we'll rack it back up again. Steve Pate being the leader, he has to be the fire car. Now he does have to do that in the restart zone. Down here in turn four, see the big tire in the center of three and four, the two little tires, one in front of it, one behind it. That's the restart zone, so he's gonna launch somewhere in three and four. You're going to have to do it before he gets to the exit of four. Let's see if he carries the momentum up. He will. Much better restart coming at you now. Here comes Steve Pate. He'll show the green flag. Walker Greer going to have to hold off Jenkins. Jenkins on the inside. Greer on the top side. How about Burke? Made a way up to the top side, and he's going to try to make it stick. Here comes the 44 of Austin Burke. Three wide for the transfer spot off of turn four. White flag in the air. Final time around the Hornets' nest. B-Main number one. 
Burke's going to go up against the outside again, make a run. He'll turn down the hill. Last chance to make the ice bowl. Burke gets by one. One more spot to go into the door panel of Jenkins. It's going to be Pate to win the heat, but your transfer spot, I'm going to say the 44, no. The 51 of Don Jenkins, according to timing and scoring, I do believe I'll leave it unofficially. And we've got a red flag situation out of turn four. I was watching the battle at the line, trying to see who was coming to the strike first. And we have rolled one in turn number four, red flag being displayed. Fans, please stay away from the fence. I'm gonna ask you to please stay away from the fence. Let emergency personnel get on the scene first. Please step back away from that fence area, please. So just getting word, the driver is okay. Race fans, the driver is okay. So good news for the 319 to Bruce Busby. A wild ride off of turn number four as we was watching the drag race to the line between the 51 of Don Jenkins and Austin Burke. I mean, we're talking nail biter to the strike. Timing the scoring says the 51. Of course, scoring loop decides that. The scoring loop location. I think that's been a topic of discussion. How about a round of applause for our driver who's out of the car? Good to see him climb out of that 319, the Jasper, Alabama driver. Flow Racing Instant Replay. This is the speed cam. Of course, everything is relying on that scoring loop. Wherever that scoring loop is, that decides who gets that spot. Here's a look at the schedule. Take that away. And here's the battle. 44 is on the inside. Wow. And, and holy moly, there you see the wreck in the background. If you're watching the Flow Racing replay, you can see the replay of the flip coming off of turn four. Contact. I couldn't see who the other car was involved, but there was some definite contact off of turn four. We'll see if we can't get another look at that. There you see the black car in the infield. So it looks like Busby might have got into the back bumper of somebody else, and then he's the one that went upside down. So, wow. So drama at the line. Drama coming off of turn four. Hey, welcome to the Ice Bowl, race fans. B-Main number one ends with an eventful conclusion. And a junked race car for Bruce Busby. So the speed shot got the drag race to the strike. And that's what had everybody's attention. Only two of those 16, well, it was actually 14 on the racetrack, advanced to the big show. Crate Racing USA Modified Sportsman Hot Lap Locked In Cars. You need to be at staging. Dirt Car Super Late Models. Dirt Car Super Late Models. Drivers, you need to be getting suited up. We're going to be calling for you to be on your way momentarily. You will follow the Locked In Modified Cars. As we get ready to roll, B main number two. So here we go with B-Main number two. Out on the point will be the 55 of Kyle May. He'll be beside the 87. It'll be Andrew Littleton. Jared Gray in the 44 with Lonnie Newton in the two. Justin Ray in the 22. It'll be Austin James in the 44. 
Corey Hillman in the 01X. Chris Hill, he'll be in the 55. Yogi Settler in the Y04. Kevin Higgins, he'll be out of Hamplin, Alabama in the 49. Parker Thompson in the T7 with Jermaine Baines in the 14J. Dwayne Vinston in the 88. Tanner Gatlin in the 74. Trey Horton, Zach Shelton, Sean Mitchell, Dan Ferguson set to round out the field here in B-Main number two for the Crate Racing USA Modified Sportsman. Once again, Modified Sportsman feature cars. If you're already locked in and you want a test session, need you in staging, looks like we do have you in staging right now. So that is good news. Thank you. Dirt Car Super Late Models. Dirt Car Super Late Models, be getting staged, be getting ready. We're going to roll you coming up momentarily. Tell you what, two really good Dirt Car Super Late Model B mains coming up. So they will line up this second. Crate Racing USA Modified Sportsman. Tri-State Open Wheel Modified B main. By the way, you can check out the Tri-State Open Wheel Modified Series on Facebook. So side by side, the wheel and caution lights will go out. And we will get ready to roll the field. Final opportunity to race your way in. Scheduled to be 18 of these. 16, it looks like. Two of them are going to be a scratch. So here we go. It'll be May. It'll be Littleton. Littleton on the outside. May on the inside. The black 55. Green flag in the air. Smooth. That may be the best restart we've seen in three days. Or May initial start, I should say. May's going to go to the middle. Littleton to the top. Top two going to kind of pull away. Side by side. Here comes the 44 of Gray and Newton. Newton side by side. Remember, only the top two. You got to be in one of those first two spots. That means everybody else is going to be trying to get there as quick as they can. The 55's up the racetrack. Something broke in the front of the 55 of Chris Hill, and that's going to bring the wheeling caution lights out. Unofficially, one lap is scored. 55 had some issues coming off of turn number four, and he just washed up the racetrack. And he's still got something going on on the right side of that race car. So we'll see if the 55, I'm assuming, he's going to fade off into the distance here off of the turn three exit ramp. There he goes. His weekend is done. Weed a wee Alabama native. As they continue to sort the lineup, one lap officially scored, 10 laps the distance. Locked in cars will be on the way next. Dirt Car Super Late Model Heat Race number one should be in staging. Looks like you guys are there. Thank you. So they continue to sort the lineup and get things dialed back up. Once again, race fans, if you're watching at home at Talladega Short Track TV or Flow Racing, thank you for being with us. The 33rd Annual Ice Bowl. What a night last night. Full racing program, 394 cars. As soon as the last car crossed the strike, raindrops started to fall, and then next thing you know, full-blown rain. So the field continuing to make its way. Look like the 88 machine of Dwayne Vinston. He pulled down there to the pulling part, trying to get some fenders pulled away.
So here we go. He's going to light back up. Wheel and caution lights are extinguishing in. Kyle May, he will lead the field. Now Andrew Littleton's going to have some competition to his outside to Jared Gray. Top two, going to make it to the ice bowl. Littleton to the inside, May to the middle. Littleton's going to hold the ground for right now. He'll come off the turn number two. The rest of the field will just cautiously make it through. Here comes the 44. He'll take a peek to the inside. Gray going to make a run on Littleton. Can't make it stick off the turn four. All of a sudden, here comes the 22, Justin Ray. Ray to the middle of the racetrack. Back here in the fourth spot. Top three on your screen right now. Top two only going to make it to the big dance. Here comes the 44 to the inside. Gray can't make it stick. Boy, Littleton got wide off the four. If Gray had have been there, he might have could have took advantage of that. One close enough, and Littleton now slips up again. He opens the door. Here comes the 44, Jared Gray. Transfer spot battle down in three and four. Gray to the inside, Littleton to the outside. He's not going to go away. Littleton at the stripe. He's going to have it this time by. Littleton by their length of a Hoosier tire down the back straightaway. Side by side for the transfer spot. Coming to halfway home this time by Gray. He's going to slide it in right to the door panel. Lifting that left front tire. We got a drag race again at the strike. Deja vu, what we just did a minute ago. Can Littleton keep the top side going? I can already tell the center to the top getting a lot better with these modifieds compared to the 604s earlier. Littleton's going to get the run again. He'll rip to the top side. Can he get the momentum at the strike? Time against scoring says this time he did. He's second. He'll lose it again in one and two. Littleton, though, how about that? The bobble from Gray. That was almost identical to where Littleton bobbled last time by. He's going to make a run at it off of turn number four. Transfer spot coming to the strike. Seven laps complete. Littleton work in the middle. And here comes the 22. I told you Justin Ray was kind of sneaking into the picture. Here he comes. Three cars battling for one spot. Will he split them off of four? He thought about it. It went through his mind. He'll go to the strike now. Two laps to go. One spot, three cars. It's all happening behind Kyle May. He's on cruise control. But I tell you what, this battle has reeled him back in. Gray on the bottom, Littleton to the top side, trying to put the 87 in the show. Last lap. Gray on the bottom, Littleton to the top. This is it, last set of turns. Kyle May right now is on his way to win this last chance race. Littleton on the top side. Is the lap car going to play a factor out of turn number four at the stripe? It will be the 44 of Jared Gray out of Raglan, Alabama, taking the final transfer spot. Andrew Littleton third, Justin Ray fourth. So still drama at the line. Nowhere near as much drama in turn four as we had in the last one. But it'll be Kyle May. It'll be Jared Gray. They make it to the big show. So the locked-in cars are going to make their way onto the racetrack. These are the drivers that are already locked into the feature tonight. They'll have a chance to test and tune around the racetrack. Track officials looking around the racetrack. I see a spring rolling over there in turn three. Pretty sure that was a spring. Here comes cars onto the racetrack. First car, that'll be Blaze Truel. Truel out of Columbia, Tennessee. Behind him, the 18 of Aaron Miller. Miller from Crane Hill, Alabama, the star one of Shannon Davis. He's set to roll off eight tonight out of East Still Springs, Tennessee. Bradley Qualls in the D21. He's going to be a top five starter tonight. The 29th, that'll be Henry Hanger. Henry out of Winchester, Tennessee. Scotty Hyatt in the 57th. Scotty will be rolling in the ninth spot tonight. Booger Brooks in the 10 machine. Driver out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. He'll be on the outside of the front row. Eric Hickerson, the guy in the 11 car. Eric's going to come out of the 17th starting spot. Luke Riddle in the 28. On the back straight away in the 5, it'll be Jeff Wells. So 10 of our 18 have came out and said, we want to try it out. 
Once again, 18 are locked in. We just put the last four in the show. Dirt Car Super Late Models. Dirt Car Super Late Models, you're next. Dirt Car Super Late Models. Once again, hot lap session. With a locked in, Frank Racing USA Modifieds. They are going to make their way around and get a little bit of more heat in the tire. And this really, these modifieds, those two Bs, has really, at least for sure, helped turns one and two. Looking down at the bottom of turns three and four, remember there's a lot of water dumped on this racetrack last night. But still looks like it's holding ground pretty good as the yellow flag will come out. That'll indicate the end of This hot lap session of the cars are locked in. Talladega Short Track, are you ready for the Dirt Car Super Late Models? Dirt Car Super Late Models will make their way to the racing surface. Here's your starting lineup for what will be B feature number one. We'll be 12 laps in distance, top four. Make it to the show. On the front row in Acrossville, Alabama, it'll be the five of Chase Oliver. The 66 of Jody Knowles and a Tyrone, Georgia will roll off second. Row two in the 99 and of noon in Georgia, it'll be Rucker Orr. It'll be the T1 of Todd Morrow and a Lafayette, Alabama. He'll roll off fourth. Row three, the 38 of Dylan Tidmore and of Gadsden, Alabama, and the 38. And to his outside in the P1, it'll be Ottawa, Tennessee's Andal Picklesmere in the P1. Row four, it will be the 82 of James Nash and Alula, Georgia, and Luke Hoffner out of Turbotville, Pennsylvania. Those will be the eight drivers expected here in B-Main number one, the top four. Make it to the 33rd annual Ice Bowl. Everybody else will load up and that will be their weekend. Here we go, Hornets Nest, super late models at the Talladega Short Track, B-Main number one. Chase Oliver, Jody Knowles will lead them to the restart zone, Greek flag in the air. Down into one and two, it'll be Knowles on the top side. He'll get a good run on Oliver. They'll be still be side by side off turn number two. It looks like a parade lap and the wheel of caution lights have come on. And out of turn number four, the 82 of James Nash will bring out the caution. That'll be one, you only get two. So he will go back to the tail of the field. So here we go again. Green flank back in the air. Side by side into one and two. Knowles will go way to the middle of the top. Oliver slides up, Knowles slides by. Change of hands from the top spot in one and two. Here comes T1 of Morrow. Morrow gonna look to the inside of Oliver. Oliver may go from starting on the point to third in a matter of a lap, and he does. Down into one and two, man, it got close. Oliver just slipped right underneath the nose of Morrow. Morrow to second, Oliver to third. Final transfer spot for the moment. Belongs to Andy Picklesmere. Picklesmere is going to hold the fourth and final transfer spot as Dylan Tidmore has slowed at the back of the field. We'll see if he's just riding around. He may have a track provision. We'll see. As they continue to work, put the laps in. Three out of the 12 complete. Jody Knowles out front. Down the back straight away. There you see the one machine. He'll slip to Chase Oliver. Picklesmear trying to get past Chase Oliver. There we scan through the field. Everybody's sorting their way through. Here comes the 15 of Luke Cocker and James Nash back towards the tail of the field. But up front, don't look now, but we are slowly starting to see Todd Morrow start to run down Jody Knowles. As Knowles is out front showing the way. Here comes the one machine. He's going to lose some ground going into three. And boy, howdy. Jody Knowles caught the cushion down in three and four, and it did not like the car did not like it. As these super late models have migrated to the top, we're halfway home. Six in, six to go. 
It's been Jody Knowles so far, Todd Morrow, and the five of Chase Oliver trying to run him down. Top four going to go to the big man. No real battles right now within the top four. Everybody kind of riding around. Top three continuing to stay together down here at three and four. There's Rucker Orr. He's the first car on the outside looking in at that 99. He's got to get one more spot if he wants to compete. And the ice bowl feature coming up later on. He's going to have to run down the one of Andy Picklesmere. Ite says he is somewhat catching. Last time by him a look, 1.134. That's still some ground to make up. But I tell you what, don't give up on it just yet. With two laps to go, maybe uh, just a little too late. Jody Dones across the strike. Rucker Orr still trying to run him down. That's the transfer spot on your screen. The 99 giving it all he's got. You can see off the top side. But as the white flag will get ready to fly, Jody Knowles, who's been almost perfect in this one so far. Down into turns one and two, the top three, as Jody Knowles will go down the back straight away and into turns three and four. B-Main number one for the Dirt Car Super Late Models will go to Jody Knowles. He will pick up the checkered flag. Second's going to go to Todd Morrow, Chase Oliver third, and Andy Picklesmere will round out the four cars that have raced their way in to the Ice Bowl main event. So it will be Jody Knowles picking up the win, and here comes Super Late Model. B-Main at number two will make their way out onto the racetrack. Here's your starting lineup. On the front row, it'll be the 38 of Matthew Taylor. Fort Valley, Georgia it is outside the 53 of Chad Trammell out of Coleman, Alabama. Row two would be Garrett Williams out of Kennesaw, Georgia. Corey Roulette out of Dahlonega, Georgia in the 05. The five adjacent Chesney and a Maynardville, Tennessee will roll off fifth. Six starter was scheduled to be the 29. Unfortunately, Jason Welsh had expired that engine. His weekend has come to an end. So I'm looking at five cars. Four of them make the show. Super late model B main number two coming to life right now. Down into turns three and four. Here we go with a restart zone. Green flag out. Taylor will show the way. Taylor into one and two, three. White boy Chesney has almost ripped the left front nose off of that car. But right now he's hunting for that final transfer spot. Down into three and four. Roulette's going to get the left or the right rear quarter panel and setting for a 360. And the Wheeling caution lights have come on. Roulette was running the top side. Chesney slid it in there. Next thing you know, around he goes. So the caution will come out also. 57 of Garrett Williams. Kennesaw, Georgia driver, has slowed. So the drive shaft has come out of the five car. So Chesty's weekend done. Just like that. So the hood will come off and the driver from Maynardville, Tennessee, Jason Chesney, will see his weekend come to an end and they'll have to bring out the hook. So they will work to get Chesney off of the racing surface. And unfortunately, the 57 of Williams looks like his 
Ice Bowl may be done too. That's going to leave us three cars on the racing surface as Williams is out. Three cars left on the surface. So three cars remaining. We were going to take four. We're going to green-white checkered, and these guys will make the show. So race director Chant Smith giving them the information, saying, hey, all three of you are in the show. We're going to give a green-white checkered, finish this thing out. Be smart. Super late model locked in, drivers. You need to be in staging if you want a round of practice. Heads up in the pits. Many stocks. Many stocks. You need to be headed to staging. Many stocks. You need to be headed to staging. So a green turns into a white. And then we'll see the checkered flag down into three and four. It's Matthew Taylor, Fort Valley, Georgia. Corey Roulette climbed the railing down in one and two. The railing is not there. Climb the banking. Almost up and over the cushion. Checkered flag this time by. Out of turns three and four, it will be the 38T of Matthew Taylor. He will pick up the win here at B-Main number two. Corey Roulette will go with it. And it will also be the 53 of Chad Trammell. They'll find themselves going to the 33rd annual Ice Bowl Super Late Model main event coming up in just a little bit later on this afternoon. So now we'll bring on the locked-in cars for the Dirt Car Super Late Models. These drivers have already put themselves in the show. They're going to come out for a hot lap session to get things adjusted and set just where they want to be for that main event coming up tonight. The Dirt Car Super Late Model feature 50 laps tonight is the main event. Cars out on the racetrack. It'll be the 05 of TJ Britton out of Center, Alabama. He'll be in the 05. Car down in turns one and two in the center of turns one and two all the way from Marshalltown, Iowa. It's the Reaper, Ryan Gustin in the 19. Behind him, the car owner of Des Moines, Iowa. The 30 will be Todd Cooney. Todd Cooney in the 30. The 46 of Chris Jones out of Alabaster, Alabama. The 376, that would be Mark Baines out of Hollywood, Alabama. Raced his way in through a heat race yesterday. And down in turns one and two, the defending Ice Bowl champion did it one year ago. It'll be the Tar Heel Tiger out of Brasstown, North Carolina. It'll be Ray Cook in the 53. Another driver that slipped onto the racetrack will be the J8 down in turn number two. That'll be Jayton Frame. He'll roll off six tonight. The driver to Winchester, Tennessee. So unofficially, it's like eight have made the call of the 16 that are locked in. So half of them come out for this round of practice. And they will get a real quick practice session. And then they'll get ready to roll back off the racetrack. By the way, many stocks. Many stocks. We need you headed to staging B main one for the minis. Stock, actually, the only B main for the minis. We need you headed to staging. Racetrack, eight of our main event cars going to give it a go. Let's see who can lay down the fastest time. There's the Reaper right, Dustin on the left side of your screen. On the right side, Christian Hanger. What a story yesterday. I, the video went viral, I think, yesterday of him climbing the rail and nailing the fence in turn four and still finding a way at the top side. Right now, he's ripping turns one and two. Todd Cooney in the 30 car. If this is going to be a real quick, man, just like that, it's over. Times as they wrap up, Christian Hanger, 14.357. Ray Cook, 14.370. Ryan Gustin, 14.73.
Those are the top three times. And just as I say that, the last one to go by, Ryan Gustin goes 14.091. The Reaper will be quickest out of the super late models, the dirt car super late models that run that hot lap session. So mini stock B feature, mini stock B feature on the way next. They will be rolling to the racetrack looking for 16 of them, 16 of them. Many stocks out on the racetrack. Here's your lineup. M57 of Michael Edwards out of El Reno, Oklahoma. He'll be out front. 23 of Hunter Walton. Hiram, Georgia, second. Brandon Wilbank, Scottsboro, Alabama, the 15th, third. Jeremy Wilder of Commerce, Georgia, the 84th, fourth. It'll be Charles Schaefer, Carlton, Georgia, the 07, fifth. Ricky Rule, Aiken, South Carolina, the 51, to roll off sixth. Chase Reagan, Tuscumbia, Alabama, the 4R, seventh. Brian Hale, Manchester, Tennessee, the 87th. Brent Couch out of Auburn, Georgia, the 28th seed, ninth. Jonathan Mims, Clanton, Alabama, the double zero, roll off 10th. 11th starter will be Blue Ridge, Georgia's Doc Burke in the 24. In the 12th starting spot, Linville, Alabama, the 57, it will be Spencer Dew. The 13th of Thomas Bond at a Shelbyville, Tennessee in the 20, will roll off 13th. 14th, Scott Russell at Knoxville, Tennessee in the 5. And looking through the tail of the field, okay, here comes the rest of our cars. I was going to say, wait a minute, half of them aren't here. Here they come. Johnny Lay, Maynardville, Tennessee at the one, and, Ty, and Kyle Todd, McMinnville, Tennessee at the 62, set to be the final starters. Only three make it to the big show later on tonight. 30 lap feature for the mini stocks. Also going to let you know the 50 50. Jillian's walking around. Get your hands on those tickets. We gave out money last night. She's in the grandstands, back on the backside, handing out those 50-50 tickets. Get your hands on those. Hopefully you can walk away from the 33rd Annual Ice Bowl with some cash as well, even if you're not driving a race car. It works out good. Julianne's got those 50-50 tickets. Make sure you get those. You'll see her walking around everywhere around the Talladega Short Track. So it looks like we are waiting on one more and getting a little bit of help climbing the hill. It's a little slippery today. So we will see if the 15, and that would be Brandon Wilbanks, supposed to roll off third in this feature. See if we can get that car fired. And they are still working on the lineup. There we go. I was waiting on the 15 to get down on the bottom. Will Banks go third. Now I think we're ready. Wheel and caution lights go out. Many stocks. Many stocks on the racetrack. Getting ready to rock and roll. Here in their first, should be only, I think, B feature of the evening. So here we go, out of turn, number four, green flag in the air, top three going to the main event. 23 going to get a run on the top side, nice little smooth run for Walton off the turn two, drag race down the back straight away, Michael Edwards, he'll go inside the 89 up on the top side, topless, I believe that's Jeremy Wilder, not the 89, 84, four on that car somewhere. Sure does look like an 89 from up here. But Tommy can score it as it is an 84. We'll take it. Down the back straightaway. Top three will go single file. Here comes on the inside the 87 of Brian Hale. Hale thought about moving the 15 out of the racing group. Won't stick. There's the 57 going down the front straightaway. So as they will work their way around the Talladega short track. Two laps complete right now. Top three. Going to the big show, the 87 starting to get a run. Brian Hale and the Wheeling Caution lights are out. We got one around in turns one and two. And that would be the 51X of Ricky Rule out of Aiken, South Carolina. 
He's rolled that car around. Got it turned in the wrong direction. So the wheel and caution lights will come out. And 360 his way right back. He headed in the right direction to 51X. So working the lineup back. Get everybody back where they need to be. Mini stocks, locked in cars. Mini stock locked in cars. You need to be on your way to staging. Crank Racing USA, 602 Sportsman. You need to be getting ready. 602 late models. Need to be getting suited up. We'll be calling for you shortly. Green flag back in the air. 23 going to have a steady run on the bottom. Here comes the 87. Hales made that pass on the 89. He'll take that final transfer spot for right now. Top three. Going to move on. The 89, which is actually supposed to be an 84. Jeremy Wilder sitting there running fourth. He's on the outside looking in. He's getting ready to be under attack. Here comes the double zero, Jonathan Mims. Mims is going to slip underneath the hip side by side. That is on the outside looking in, though. And there's the Davey Allison throwback paint scheme. The 28 of Brent Couch up on the top side getting a good run. He'll shift to the inside of the 15 of Brandon Wilbanks. Wilbanks late getting to the track, started third, and he's going backwards. And now it looks like he's coming to a slow halt. He may be taking a right-hand turn, and he is. Wilbanks is off the racetrack. His time is done. Here's the double zero. Jonathan Mills, he'll cross the strike. Five complete halfway home. Right now, top four, very uneventful right now. They've kind of pulled away. Here comes the next battle in line. That is Wilder and the 28th of Brent Couch. Right now, that is fifth and sixth on the racetrack. Top three all that matters. The double zero is slowly starting to run down the top three. Here it comes. There's your top four. Top three make it into the show. And the double zero going to try to run these two down. They've started racing each other, and it's brought that double zero right back into the mix. They're in a uh, carburetor cover. And it's on the racetrack, on the back straightaway. We'll see how that will eventually. And the officials are getting word from the backstretch fans that there is debris on the track. We see it. For the moment, everything looks good. Out of turn number four, white flag in the air, final time. Can the double zero get the 57 off the bottom? Final transfer spot. There's the fight for the lead. Here comes the fight for the transfer spot. Four cars fighting for all the money or at least the transfer to get in. Here's the battle for the lead. 87 up on the top. Hale's going to make a run. That's not going to happen. 23 of Hunter Walton. He will win the b main for the mini stocks. Unofficially, Brian Hale. And finishing in the third spot. How about that? The double zero did get by the 57 of Michael Edwards. So the double zero will get that third spot. But it is Hunter Walton, the driver out of Hiram, Georgia. He will pick up the win in the B feature for the mini stocks. So here we go. These are the locked-in feature cars for the mini stock main event. They'll come back later on. 30 laps is the distance for their feature. These cars already locked in to tonight's main event. Crank Racing USA 602 Sportsman Late Models. You need to be heading to staging. 602 Late Models. Looks like you are moving there swiftly. Thank you for that. Locked-in cars will be making your final adjustments. Factory stocks and pure stocks. Be getting ready. We'll be calling for you soon. 21 mini stocks locked their way in yesterday. 
Only three come out of that B. But a ton, 37 mini stocks made the call here this weekend. So a quick hot lap session for the locked in cars. They're going to go out on the racetrack. We'll see who goes the quickest. Remind them, I'm sure they did over the race control. Hey, this means nothing. Don't wreck each other here. You're already in the show. Test of two. These guys, by the way, they're a part of the action this weekend and as we mentioned 37 of them 53 of those factory stocks beer stocks over the weekend 74 hot shots the SCDRA hot shots 74 of them 70 plus they're going to get two features tonight the SCDRA Mr. NASCAR Merit Memorial Race 1 and Race 2 they'll both be 20 laps $100 to start how about that for the hot shots so there we go. That will wrap up, and it is John Smart, 16th, 504. John's going to start second. Gracie Dugan, 16th, 704, second quick. She'll start third in that feature. And that will do it for the locked in mini stock cars. Crate Racing USA, 602. Sportsman Late Models be making their way to the racetrack next. So 602 late models. Sportsman will be out on the racetrack. Here we go. Top four going to make the show. Ten laps on the front row will be the 24-H of Calhoun, Georgia's Chris Hugh. To his outside, Cornersville, Tennessee, 214 of Dylan Bias. Row number two will be Billy Denny. Denby out of Tullahoma, Tennessee in the 45. The O of Olivia Gentry out of Newton, Georgia, roll off fourth. Brent Cartwright in the 77 will roll off fifth. And the outside of him, the sixth starter, will be Chase Walls out of Winchester, Tennessee in the 22. Bo Smith, Sylvania, Georgia, the 93 will roll off 7th to his outside. Lexington, Tennessee, 10 of Jason Hayes. It will be Krista Travis in the KO4 out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And Cole Barnett, Villa Rica, Georgia, in the C3 will roll off 11th. To the outside of Cole will be Stanton Davis at a Tunnel Hill, Georgia, in the S17. It'll be Stacey Flanagan out of Holly Springs, Georgia, in the F8 13th. 14th, Rob Johnson out of Kennesaw, Georgia, in the ninth spot. Jake Hollis, Aniston, Alabama, the 88, roll off 15th. Steve Hadley, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, in the 70, will go 16th. And it will be Riley Lewis in the 39. Scheduled to be the tail of the field. Don't see the 39. So we got what we got. Scheduled to be 17. Top four, make the ice bowl. Everybody else, their weekend is done. Here we go to the restart zone. It will be Chris Ho and Bill Bias, creep flag in the air. Oh, they got shaky back there from about 10th on back. We'll see. Oh, the first two are together. Caution's going to go out. We got one upside down in turns one and two. Red flag. Red flag out in turns one and two. And, man, oh, man, the front two got together, and the end result was the 24 up on its side. Red flag out here on the racetrack. And just got word that the driver is good. Driver is good. And they work to clear out the calamity that happened down in turns one and two. The top two dove off into one and two. It looked like they were connected before they ever got there. And we'll be seeing if we can get a replay on that start on your flow racing replay. They were hooked together by the time they got to turn one and then chaos ensued. 
as the field will set stalled over in turn number four, and they'll work to get these cars separated. 24 is the car that's setting up on its side. As that front row come together right at the stripe, they work their way through the stripe, and then it turns one and two. That's where everything kind of melee. It's a wonder we didn't pile up more cars than that because that was directly in front of the field. Just as we were taking the green flag, the Flow Racing Instant Replay, we'll go take a look at that now. Here they go side by side, the 24 and the 214. And, and wow, the, the 24 looked like maybe turning right, not going anywhere, maybe turning left, the car not wanting to go. We'll look at it again. They're together right there. And I don't know, maybe the right front may have been off the ground because it was on the nose of the 214. And that was how it ensued. I believe that the 44 is not there. The car might have come back over on all four wheels. But needless to say, one more look at it, and I'll let you be the judge. Now, we did see a hot shot last night going to turn one and just, just not turn at all. That one didn't end that bad. It was just a head on into the wall, but 24 is up and over. Safety crews doing what they need to do to make sure the driver and the car are taken care of. Driver is okay. 602, locked in cars. You need to be staging factory stock, pure stocks. Make your adjustments, make your adjustments. We'll be calling for you coming up. So the crew's working to get the 24 car hooked up, taken off of the racing surface. So far, already had a very wild and interesting day three of the Ice Bowl. So far, our drivers, thank goodness for that safety equipment. There's a lot of corners drivers may cut, but never cut the safety equipment. By the way, that's a good uh, lead into the Velocita. They've got their merchandise off the turn number four. Go by there and see them. Thinking about getting into racing in 2024, you need all the safety gear. Stop over by there and see Velocity just off the turn here before they'll get you all taken care of. Make sure you take some of that Talladega Short Track Apparel home. The Main Street ice cream is here. Also, lemonade, pork, rinds, everything you need. Taco Tuesday. Johnny's Barbecue sitting over there in the pits, the red trailer. Right over there next to the golf, the uh, go-kart track. Make sure you stop by there and see them. And the 50-50 tickets walking around. Get your hands on those. We'll draw for that later on today. Gave away money last night. We'll give away money again tonight. That's right, you could leave the Talladega short track not having a race car and get money in your pocket. This cruise looks like they finalized the work down in turn one and two. Also, a big shout-out to Bama Sheds, First Bank of Alabama, Hoosier Racing Tires, Race Car Engineering, VP Racing Fuels and Lubricants, O'Reilly Auto Parts, Wheeling Engineering. Of course, they give you the big caution lights, beautiful caution lights that light up the Talladega short track. Big thank you to all of them. Advanced Heating and Cooling, Advantage Tire, Coldwater Piping Plus, Hooligan Harley-Davidson, Ken Jeter Store Equipment, just to name a few of the great sponsors here at the Talladega Short Track. We're rolling cars. So the 45 stalled here on the front straightaway. 
Billy Denby. Sharp looking 45. So with all that chaos that ensued on the initial start of the race, all of that, we're going to line back up with Brent Cartwright and Olivia Gentry on the front row. So we just wiped out the whole front row. And here comes row number two. Remember, top four are going to make the show. We've yet to complete an official lap, so everybody is still in the mix. So the 45 will slip back up to the front row. So the Wheeling Caution Lights, I'll look for them to go out this time. One to go being given. Next time I will go try it again. B main number one for the Crate Racing USA 602 late models. Off of turn number two, down the back straightaway. Olivia Gentry on the outside of that front row. Cartwright inside of row number two. Now the 22 of Chase Walls. Winchester, Tennessee going to be in the transfer spot in the fourth spot. Green flag. Finally, we're back underway. One and two going to be not as adventurous as it was. Here comes Olivia Gentry. She's going to get the run down the back straightaway. Side by side for that top spot. Here comes the 45. Denby on the bottom, trying to make it stick. Olivia Gentry will lead lap number one. How about that? Denby second, Walls third, not for long. He'll get a run on the top side. Here comes the battle for the second spot, 22 up top. There you see your transfer spot. That'll be the 72 machine, or the 77 rather, Brent Cartwright trying to hold on. Here comes the 10, Jason Hayes. He's on the outside looking in right now. 10's going to go door to door with the 77. That's the battle for that fourth and final transfer spot. Hayes will go to the inside. He'll see what he can do off of turn number four. Olivia Gentry continues to show the way. Hayes will go to the transfer spot. Here comes the 77. He'll fight back to the outside. Cartwright going to make a run at it. Right in front of them is, Bill, is Denby. Denby's got a battle right behind him. Cartwright's going to try to make it three wide. He thought about it. No, Hayes to the inside. And we got one puffing smoke. Down the front straightaway, that would be the 88. Oh, and the 77 goes around at two, and the caution's going to come out. And that is going to bring in also the 93 of Bo Smith. And the 77 was in the transfer spot, got loose off of two, went around, and the 93 had nowhere to go. And you talk about some heavy damage to the left front of that 77 car. So the 77 will try to limp away. I would imagine a left-hand turn is going to be in his future. And he may exit the speedway to the right. Track crews are coming to work on him now. The 93 is rolling away. Bo Smith will stay on the racetrack. Man, he just kind of jumped over the nose of the 77. Fighting for a transfer spot. Only the top four. Running in the fifth spot before that happened. So track crews working to get 77 on the hook. Kubota Tractor's been busy this weekend, that is for sure. As the 93 of Bo Smith has pulled back down to the infield wall on the back straightaway, the 93 down in at Muck. Yeah, that is not where you want to be down against these walls. You can see all that mud that's caked up down there, especially way down there at the bottom. And we'll see if the 93 stays on the racing surface or decides to call it a weekend. And he's going to stay on the racetrack. So 
So the 77 going to get towed away, and unfortunately his Ice Bowl weekend will come to a close. So continuing to see the field sort out as Olivia Gentry got out front. Good to see her march to the front here and showing the way so far. The rest of the field will be asked to get into the Dixie double file formation. And they will get lined up, ready to go. Wheeling Caution Light still on right now. They will be extinguished. So we'll try to go back green here out of turns three and four. Gentry back at it. Here we go. Four laps of the five complete. Top side comes the 22. Here comes Walls. Walls going to make a run at it. He'll slide to the bottom. Thought about it. Trying to decide. He'll go underneath. Thought about the slide job. to go door to door with Gentry off of four. Walls will move the zero off the bottom. Gentry's going to go on the defense now. She'll slide back over the 10 of Hayes. Hayes, by the way, and the 70 is going to go around in turns one and two. The 70 of Stephen Hadley. So we will see, speaking of which, I was just looking at this, Jason Hayes starting eighth in this feature, running third. And the 70 of Steve Hadley out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee is gonna go around down here in turns one and two. I think that was a solo spin. So the 70 loops around, wheel and caution lights go out, right back after we go, new leader. 22 at Chase Walls, Winchester, Tennessee. Green flag coming out, 70's done. He'll pull off the racetrack. Walls going to get a run down into one and two. Hayes gets by Gentry. Gentry now is going to have to fend off a, a two-pack cars. That'll be the 88 machine of Jake Hollis, who has come from the tail of the field. And here comes the 45 of Denby. Denby's underneath the zero. Remember, only the top four going to make it to the show. Three cars fighting for two spots. 88's going to have it. No, here comes Denby. Denby fights back to the inside, trying to make that car rotate. You can see that left front tire. Oh, in trouble for the 88. Right rear's flat, it looks like, for the 88 machine of Jake Hollis. Yeah, and it definitely it is. The right rear of the 88 is flat. And we have stayed green. Can the 88 get off the racing surface? Yes, he will. We're going to stay green. Back at it. Transfer spot. Oh, and Olivia's got issues off of two. That's going to cost her some prime real estate. Something happened to the zero. White flag's in the air. Down into one and two. Your leader. It'll be Chase Walls. Transfer spot right now belongs to the four of Andrew Moody. Moody's going to slip himself into a transfer spot now to turn four. Chase Walls will win the B main. And Andrew Moody just got himself into the ice bowl. Wasn't in contention hardly at all that whole entire run. Moody started ninth. Temple, Georgia is where he calls home. He just raced his way into fourth, and he slipped himself right into the ice bowl. Of course, you got to go over the scales first. Unofficially, it'll be Chase Walls, Jason Hayes, Billy Denby, Andrew Moody, your top four. Olivia Gentry, first car on the outside looking in. Something happened off of turn two with that zero machine. So that is Crate Racing USA 602 Sportsman B Mate number one. Number two rolling out for you next. Locked in cars, 602 locked in cars. We need you headed to staging. You should already be there. Pure stocks, pure stocks, factory stock, pure stocks. We need you heading to the shoot. So here is the lineup for B feature number two for the 602 late models. Kent, Georgia, the 87, Chris Woodall will be out front. Piedmont, Alabama, the 7P of Stephen Pruitt will go second. Boonville, Mississippi, the M45 of Morgan Lambert will go third. Brody Thompson, Talladega, Alabama, T9 goes fourth. Logan McCannahan, Manchester, Tennessee, the 7 will go fifth. Sam Green, Knoxville, Tennessee, in the 44, sixth. Diesel Jones, Alabaster, Alabama, the 46, seventh. John Sands, Lincoln, Alabama, the 25 will go eighth. Everlow, Warrior, Alabama, the 16 go ninth. Jake Barnes, 10th out of Prattville, Alabama. 11 starter will be the 8X of Valley Grove, Alabama, Sam Norman. Roy Lohr, Lewisburg, Tennessee, in the 53. 
Starting 13th in the Morris, Alabama, it'll be the 35 of Sherman Everett. Jamie Godby, Carrollton, Georgia, the 97. Jonathan Warnick, Mac, Mark Haddon. Expected to be the last two starters. Looking to see. 13 did make the call. 04 did not, so Haddon's going to be a scratch. Quite a few others, it looks like, won't make it either. Wheeling caution lights go out. Top four make the show. Last chance to race your way in for the 602 Lake Models Creek flag. 87 is going to have the bottom in one and two. Everybody else wants the bottom as well. Can they make it work somehow, some way? We got through one and two. Wow. And the seven. Oh, boy. How about that save off the of turn two? Talladega short track. Woo. Steven Pruitt. He was turned the wrong way. Made it happen out of turn number two. Here comes the 45 machine. This will be Morgan Lambert. Lambert's going to get a run on the top side. Top four make the show. Lambert's got the middle of the racetrack working now off of turn number four. He'll get a good run at the strike. Give it to the second spot. Slipping also into the picture will come the seven of Logan McClanahan. McClanahan in that orange, black, and white seven. Here comes the 25 of John Sand. Sand started back in the eighth spot. He's hunting for a transfer spot. Now I'm starting to see cars migrate up to three and four, starting to like it. We're widening this baby out, and everybody in the back side of the field is running the fence in one and two. Talladega short track. We are starting to see that top side start to develop. The more we see that, faster these cars are going to go. Fight for the lead off of turn number two. Here comes Lambert. Lambert straight up to the fuel cell, the 87 of Woodall. Woodall goes to the bottom. Lambert to the middle. Off the top side of turn number four. Almost a drag race. Oh, man, Lambert thought better of it. Right now, he's in a transfer spot. Man, 87, the car's just not handling. Oh, a 25 hard end of the fence on the front straightaway. John Sands, Lincoln, Alabama, just smacked the infield wall. All right, here on the front straightaway, right in front of you. And that comes as we are halfway home here in B feature number two for the Crate Racing USA 602 late models. So as we see that caution flag come out, the 25, thank goodness for that Kubota. I don't know if anything else could have got down there in that muck to get him out. They're going to pull the 25 away, and I hate that because he was sitting there running in contention. Had come back from eighth, got all the way up fighting for a transfer spot, and then went backwards. But that eight car on the back straightaway getting ready to start rolling now, that is Sam Norman. Norman went straight up there to the fence, started 11th, and was starting to make a charge. Top side down here in one and two really started to get very racy on that last run. Thought we would eventually see that top side kind of clear out. We're starting to see that now. So moving right along in our 602 portion, once again, locked in cars, your hot lap session. Coming up next, factory stock, pure stocks, factory stock, pure stocks. You're making those adjustments. You should be on your way to staging right now. And the 25 is still in the mud. I want to say he's going to try to get back out on the racetrack. They were going to try to pull him out of that muck. We'll see. And a four-wheel slide, maybe, maybe not. We'll try again. There we go. All right. I would almost bet one thing, the 25 will probably be not light at the scales with that added mud he just caked on there. We'll see, hopefully he'll shake that off.
All right, so the caution lights are out. Getting ready to rock and roll. Back at it. Here we go. Halfway home, 602. And what a restart from the 87. Everybody else might have been back there taking a nap. Oh, and a slight job off the nose of the seven comes Lambert. Lambert's going to take the second spot back. He'll go back to the top side again. Right now it is the 44 machine of Sam Green. He's in the final transfer spot. Oh, and we've turned around the top three cars. The top three just went around on the front straightaway. Wow. Oh, man. If that doesn't shuffle the deck just a little bit. And all that the 87 of Chris Woodall can do is shake his head. Out front leading this thing, and around he goes. And that happened off of turn number four. Just as we were talk talking about the transfer spot, we spent three of the top three cars around. Boy, the front is not the place to be. So the 87 out front, we'll see how timing and scoring will sort this one out. Second one, rather interesting. Second B main, that is. So we'll see how they'll sort things back up. So Lambert, as of right now, the 45 will go to the front. Flow racing replay. Here they come with the speed cam right at you. Here's your leader, which will be the 87 of Woodall. He's going to come down the front straight away. Uh, well, something happened with him. Woodall went to the left, and he took out the next two cars behind him. See, watch this car right here. Turning, turning, not turning, and then a little too much. Something, wait a minute. Let's see if we see that again. Right front looked like it was bouncing around. Something might have broken the right front of that race car. We'll look at it one more time on your Flow Racing Replay. Watch the right front tire the way it moves. Here he comes off of turn number four. Yeah, it's cattywampus of some kind in that right front. Didn't look like a natural motion. But man, oh man, wrong place at the wrong time for the other cars behind him, and they'll line it back up. Somebody's got to win out of that. It'll be the 45 of Morgan Lambert. Lambert had got to the top side anyway, so put the seven of Pruitt back in his spot. And the seven of Logan McClanahan will be behind him. 44 of Sam Green now will take the fourth and final transfer. Well, the 87 has stayed out there. So let's look at that right front tire as he comes off of turn four. Well, it doesn't look like anything's wrong with it now, but it sure was shaking a lot when he come off of turn four when that car hang, hung that big left. Said all that to say this, halfway here in this B features, the wheel and caution lights will stay on. Locked in cars waiting and staging for their hot lap session. Factory stocks, pure stocks. You need to be heading there. Your B mains and the hot lap feature cars. So it will be out front, Morgan Lambert. Boonville, Mississippi in that 45 car. A pair of sevens behind him. Top four transfer. So Sam Green in that blue and white and black. 44 is in the final transfer spot for now. Lambert will launch off into one and two. A pair of sevens will rock and pop. They'll separate things out. Transfer spot right now will be the 45 and a 46. Three wide for the fourth spot and the 44 is Sam Green was in a bad spot coming off of turn three. He was on the bottom. He looked like he kind of got pushed down into that apron just enough. And the nose of that car caught that little berm. There's not much of a berm down there in the bottom, but there is enough there to hang the nose on. We saw Brad Dyer yesterday caught that just enough to redirect that car, and it looked like the nose of the 44 slipped over that as well. So approaching the 10 minute mark. So 
So they will work the timing and scoring to get everything dialed back up. Trouble looks to be back there with the 53 of Roy Lohr and the 8 of Sam Norman. I believe the 8 was ahead of him when they come by. There you see Lambert. Logan McClanahan, Stephen Pruitt. That's the two sevens behind him. They'll try it again. Wheeling caution lights are out. Lambert will set the pace. Out of turns three and four. Lambert's going to look for the restart zone. We're back at it. McClanahan will follow. So will Pruitt. Down into turns one and two they go. Lambert on the top side. So is Pruitt. Pruitt will come through. Here comes the 46 and Diesel Jones. Don't look now. I haven't got one around in one. Can he get it moving? Will he move the car? He will not. Caution comes out. Wheeling caution lights are back out. This time it's going to be for the nine of Jack Barnes. Barnes, the driver to Prattville, Alabama. Wheeling caution lights are out. Here we go again. Lambert's going to be there. Man, oh, man, they're going to beat and bang each other on the lower groove. But we stay green. I'm hoping he's going to see one of those ricochet-style wrecks. Diesel Jones going to go on the top side. Going to make a run on the outside of the seven. Transfer spot is fourth. Here comes the 35 into the picture. 35 is Sherman Everett. By the way, he started 13th. And he's all the way up to the fifth. One spot to go, trying to get a transfer spot. Boy, everybody in the second half of the field starting to get anxious, and you can tell it. Trying to make some drastic moves to try to get back to the front right now. It is still out front. Lambert, McClanahan, Diesel Jones, and Stephen Pruitt. Pruitt's got the final transfer spot for now. White flag in the air. We're going to try to put this one in the books. There's Morgan Lambert. Lambert took advantage. Of oh, the chaos that ensued in front of him, and he'll go down the back straightaway. For the moment, he's going to have everything in hand. Final transfer spot side by side. Here comes the 35 of Everett. Everett will go door to door with Pruitt. Final chance to race into the ice bowl out of turn number four. At the stripe, he got him. Timing and scoring says the 35 got by the seven, and Sherman Everett, who started 13th, raced his way in. Wow. Another nail biter for the 35, and Sherman Everett out of Morris, Alabama race fan started 13th in that B main, and he just put himself into the 33rd annual Ice Bowl. How bad do you want it? He's in the show, and that's our two. Crank Racing USA 602 B mains. Locked in cars will be on their way next. So here we go with our locked in cars. So the locked in cars are on the racetrack. This is once again just a simple hot lap session.
with the cars that are locked into the 602 feature. Of course, now we've completed that field with those two B mains. So I just got word from in the penthouse to the outhouse, Sherman Everett's transponder was in the wrong location. Oh. 35 had the transponder in the wrong location when it, and that's why it's unofficial until it's officially official just like that the transponder was in the wrong location and the 35 will miss the ice bowl man they rolled through the scales that's why they checked the location of that transponder which is that timing device that goes through that scoring loop gives us the laps and all that good stuff you see on the my race pass but unfortunately, Sherman Everett put on a show from 13th, but it's not going to be enough with that transponder being in the wrong location, and he will miss out on the main event coming up. That would be my first dadgummit of the weekend. So here we go with B feature number one for the factory stocks. Top four. Looks like they will make the show unofficially. Timing and scoring, I was trying to see what they said. Top four. Here's your starting lineup. The H07, Hayes and Schreier will be on the front row. Josh Holbrook, Hamilton, Alabama. The 555 goes second. It'll be Michael Peacock, Dothan, Alabama. The 44P with Ted Denson, Chelsea, Alabama. The six. Ricky Phillips, Clinton, South Carolina. The 42 will go fifth. Six will be Toby Minston, Coleman, Alabama. In the 88 will go sixth. Matt Dunn at a Hillsboro, Tennessee in the X. Blake Swan, he'll roll off eighth. Aniston, Alabama, the 21B. Jace Isabel, Venn Diver, Alabama, the 76 will go ninth. Mike Garris, and a Clanton, Alabama, the 27 go 10th. Michael Kirby will go 11th. Chris Elliott, Linville, Alabama, the 19th, 12th. Todd Fields, Mount Pleasant, Tennessee, in the F65, 13th. Chad Denmark in the 14 in the 114. And the rest of the field, it'll be Brandon LaBerry, Sandy Dawson, Kyle Smith, Roy Lawyer II, Joel Ray, Greg Wilkins. Here we go. Factory stock, pure stock. B main number one underway. They'll dive off into one and two. I'm getting word. One. Showing in time and scoring one will transfer. Holy moly. Wow. So here we go right now. That would be the 555 of Josh Holbrook. Everybody fighting for the top spot. Win or go home, literally. Straight away, they'll sort it out. It's a Hornets nest for fourth on back. There's Holbrook out front showing the way. A little bit of a contest for the second spot. Oh, and one and up and over the reservation. Off turn four from the state green. Yes, we will. Here comes the 07, and the yellow is out. We crashed them down in one and two. Just as I turned my head to check over turn three and four, we fouled them up. The 19 of Chris Elliott, he's there in the mix. So they are checking on the drivers down in turns one and two. And take a look at that new wall down in turns one and two. It has seen some action this weekend, and it hadn't budged an inch. So hats off to the crew that put that wall there. I mean, you can see the war marks down in turns one and two. Just like that, we will work to get the cars sorted out. Coming out of one and two, and that is the 22 car, I think. It says 22 on it. And those two are trying to figure out what their plans are for the season opener here at the Talladega Short Track, which, by the way, will be April the 6th. Season opener for Talladega Short Track will be April the 6th. Preseason open practice March 23rd. But the next event here at the Hornet's Nest will come March 15th and 16th, the Bama Bash with the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series will be right here at the Hornet's Nest. Mark your calendars for that. March 15th and 16th.
So factory stocks, pure stocks, getting line back up. They'll try it again. By the way, 50-50 tickets over there on the back straightaway. Julianne's got those. Get your hands on those 50-50 tickets. Take yourself some money home with you. We are ready to rock and roll. Wheel and caution lights have come back out. Or no, they have went out, I should say. We're coming back at it. to sort their way through. The battle now for second. Scheiser's going to be there. Oh, a little bit of bump and run off of turn number four. Caution flag is out. 42 is going to go around down in turns one and two. Well away from the field. That was the 42 of Ricky Phillips. So I just got the official word. Top two will come out of this instead of the ones. Ah, that gives somebody a little extra breathing room. So it will be the top two cars coming from this first B main, and we are three wide at the stripe. Let it develop down in one and two, and, and it did. How about that? Sorted itself out. Shire's going to get a good run. Three wide for third. Six car set now. I'm going to save it for a few more laps anyway. Here comes the 22. He's going to get a good run behind, or the 44 rather, get a run behind the 21. 21 of Blake Swan. Swan in the third spot. That's on the outside looking in. Go down into turns one and two right now. That is third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh on your screen. That is following the top two who only transfer. So only the top two going to make the feature. Here's a side by side battle. That'll be the 44 car. Michael Peacock on the outside of that 65. That'll be top field start at 13. How about that? Here comes another car from the tail of the field. 13th starter sorting his way up right now, running in the fifth spot. Halfway home here in factory stock, pure stock, V main number one. And these cars have kind of migrated to the top side too. Especially down here in turns three and four. And we're starting to see, but you can't really tell right here. Top two cars rip the top side of turn four, and that cushion is starting to fade away. Watch these top two cars if they'll stay up there. And never mind, the wheel and caution lights will come out. The 88's around it, turns one and two. That'll be Sandy Dawson, Montevello, Alabama. He'll go around. Getting word he may have had some contact with the fence, possibly may have went over the fence. Almost. Now, granted, one year ago it wasn't there, so then we probably could have said that. So the 88 will set stalled at the top of turns one and two. The 13 car has got some damage. Well, the 13 of Kyle Smith might have been involved in that as well. So we'll see. As the 88 sets there at the top, Flow Racing Replay will go to see. I, I got a feeling this might be a very similar location where we saw the other activity. We'll go in with your Flow Racing Instant Replay, and there you see the skid marks in one and two. As we'll see if the 88, any way possible, here's your Flow Racing Replay. There's the 88 just to your right of your screen, and ooh. Backed it right into the fence and almost up to it. Something happened to the left front. Watch the left front right here. Something's chattering the fender. He backs it straight in with the fuel cell into the fence and comes up and nearly went over the piece of wood up on the fencing in turns one and two.
Green flag back out. Here we go. Top two still going to the show. Side by side up front with a 21 to Blake Swan. Swan going to go door to door. Oh, and the 44 is going to go around in front of the field. And other than some debris, everybody's moving. We're still green. 44 barely moving. We'll see if it's going to stay that way. They're going to count the lap, I do believe. Wheeling caution lights come out. So the wheeling caution lights will come out. And drivers being asked to take a breath here. So we <laughs> have kind of slowed down somewhat the factory stock cars. I think they realize only the top two are going to be making it into the main event out of this. So wheeling caution lights will come out. Race director Chan Smith said, hey, let's take a deep breath here. Seven of 10 complete. Top two gonna make it into the main event. We'll have some of those non qualifiers coming up later on after those features. Green flag in the air right now. 21 gets another good run. He'll go door to door with Schreier. Schreier up the top side. Swan in the middle. Here comes three, four wide off the turn two, and they made it work. What a move. What a move off of turn number two when they went three wide. And the pass for the second spot for the moment and the final transfer spot looks like it's going to lie in the hands of the 65. Up top, Fields. By the way, Fields. Started 13. Right now he's in the final transfer spot. He's fighting for the lead white flag. Field started 13th, made maybe the biggest move of the race. Now he's down in one and two. Not going to have enough momentum to get a run down there. He's going to have the transfer spot for now, down into three and four. Your winner, more than likely, out of Hamilton, Alabama. We'll see. Off of turn number four, it'll be the 555 of Josh Holbert. But how about the run from the F-65 of Todd Fields. Race fans started 13th in that feature, and he just raced his way into the show. Now, I say that. We'll go back to what we said earlier. It's unofficial until they get across the scales. But for now, he's in. So here comes B main number two for the factory stocks. Starting lineup B number 21 of Thomas Norton. He's outside the 56 of Austin Matz. Row number two will be the 32 of Dwayne Hicks. To his outside the K39 of Jeremy Key. Row three will be the X29 of Robert Wolf out of Milton, Florida. John Johnson Jr. in the K46. Grant Burton, Clinton, South Carolina in the G41. Seventh, Logan Hicks in the L16 will go eighth. Chris Popwell in Marbury, Alabama in the C-17. Lance Green, 257. He'll roll off 10. 11 will be Lane Smith in the 14. We'll see if anybody else, I want to say the 12. Jenny Gresham in the 12 car should be out there as well. And I think that's her hood that might be flopping in the wind. If that's the case, Jenny might have to cry, hire or fire her crew chief, Mario Gresham. They are going to keep rolling. Green flag in the air, and we're getting after it. Here we go. Be featured number two. At least it's not flapping in front of the driver's face, and the yellow is out. We got one stop down in one and two, and that looks like it'll be the 257 of Lane Green at a Van Diver, Alabama. So 
he sets down there. There is some fluid down there on the racetrack. So they'll double them back up. Still looking for lap number one. Looks like the 01. It's from the previous race making their way out. I was going to say, see an 01, and it looks like Grasham's going to pull down here the attention of one of the track officials that hood that was flapping. Yeah, go ahead and just take all that off. Well, maybe not. Maybe they'll put something in there to keep it from flapping. And the 12 is going to pull away. So they're going to stack him back up. We'll try it again. Two by two. Let's try it one more time. Talladega short track. B feature number two. Going to get ready to come to life. Still looking at that first lap. Great flag in the air. Oh, and the 14. We'll see if he can get off the racetrack. Uh, that car had been smoking earlier, and I uh, wouldn't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. They're going to pull out close enough to the racing surface. It's going to smoke up, and the yellow flag's going to come out. That's one of those, no, don't. And then he did. So the 14, Elaine Smith out of Clanton, Alabama. Definitely got something going on in that 14. Thought maybe he was going to try to pull it back out on the racetrack. We'll see if it will last this time. He does that again. That will be the end of his weekend due to that two caution rule. Once again, factory stock, pure stock, hot lap lock-in cars. You need to be staging hot shots, SCDRA hot shots. We need you getting ready to rock and roll. We need you heading to staging for your first B-Main of the day. Remember, the hot shot's going to have that Mr. NASCAR Merritt Memorial Race 1 and Race 2. Two hot shot features coming up tonight. $100 to start both of those. How about that? 70-plus hot shots. Rolled in this weekend. Two B mains for them coming up. And of course, two hot a shot hot lap sessions. Here we go. Green flag back out. Everybody will follow the Congo line down at turns one and two. Thought about three white, bought better of it. 32 of Hicks in that second spot. 56 machine just on the outside of him. That'll be Matt. That's where you'll find the final transfer spot. Leader's going to dive down into one and two. And work down the back straight away. 56 gets a great run off of two. Can't quite get to the 32's bumper to get into that second spot for the transfer. He's still got his hands full, though, of that 39, the K39 of Jeremy Key. Come on, turn number two. There's still three cars under a blanket, third, fourth, and fifth. And two cars have gotten together on turn two, the 17. He's got some serious left front damage, and that's where he's going to come to a halt. Wheel and caution lights have come on. As the 17 of Chris Popwell, left front has turned the way it should be going. He's trying to get that car either turned up the hill, and he's got his wheel turned to the right. I hate to tell him he's not going that way. <laughs> so unfortunately, the 17 going to go on the hook.
So they will work to get him off of the racing surface. The 257 also involved in that just a little. Lane Green out of Van Diver, Alabama. He's back over there in the work area. And the 14, I thought he was going to stop. He's still going. And I believe he's going to call it a night. And the 14 of Lane Smith has called it an evening. So they are getting ready to stack it back up. The 257 has been asked to catch the tail of the field. And we are slowly working our way through. B feature number two. We still only have that one lap officially scored. Dwayne Hicks out front. Top four are going to find themselves in the main event. Factory stock feature cars. Factory stock feature cars. And ain't you in staging your hot lap session coming up. Hot shots, hot shots. B main cars for the SCDRA Hot Shots, DJ Staging. So out of turn number four, here they go down to match in the front straight away down into one and two. 32 this time gets a much better run. Hicks will go on the inside, can't make it stick. Now to the top side comes the Ford machine. That'll be John Johnson Jr. Working the top side, he'll have a good run, man. What a move on the high side for the XSOS machine. Talked about that number yesterday. So down the back straight away and into turn three. Here comes the 32. He'll look to the top side. Can't make nothing stick. Top two only going to transfer. Side by side down the front straight away. Four car just trying to get underneath. Well, he might do it this time. It's going to cost him a ton of real estate. Both of those cars now going to fall about four car lengths back. So out of turn number four, they will come to the strike. Seven laps officially completed the 10. It is still Thomas Norman out front showing the way. Oh man, and the four cars up the fence. Johnson Jr. just climbed the railing and the wheeling caution lights have come on. And the 257, his day is done. That's two for Lane Green. I got a feeling his weekend is now officially over, and it looks like also exiting the racetrack. Going to be the 39, the K39 of Jeremy Key. He's done two, and the four car of John Johnson Jr., who climbed the railing down here in one and two, has come to a stop in three and four. So three cars all having trouble on that one circuit as we put lap number seven on the board of the 10 here in B feature number two. So it looks like the car is starting to show some smoke. Driver got out. Driver gets back in. They're going to tell him they're going to try to push him away. He climbed the fence down in one and two. Obviously, some kind of damage on the right side. They're looking at that right side of the race car anyway. So we'll wait to get him rolled away by the way we want those feature cars your hot lap session looks like you're lined up and i see the hot shots already lining up good job guys moving right along 241 on the clock this afternoon on the saturday afternoon scdra hot shots will have their bees their feature hot laps then we'll go into the opening ceremonies you need to find a place for those opening ceremonies going to be special We'll do those coming up after the hot shots. Okay. 
So the field will work their way down into one and two. The wheel and caution lights are still on. Remember, race fans, get over to the concession stand, get you something good to eat, good to drink. All kinds of great food around the raceway. I see the line still over there at Johnny's Barbecue. If you're in the pit area, you got to stop by there. Here we go. Looks like the field's going to somewhat get back together. We'll try it again. Green flag back in the air. Down into one and two. 21 and Norman's going to show the advantage. He's been out front unadventurous for him so far through most of this race. He's had the 56 of Austin. Matt's behind him. And he's been riding pretty comfortable in that second spot right now, but they're side by side behind him. 32 Machina Hicks, King 39 Key. Never mind, that's the 24 car. So still showing the way out front. Be the 21 Mats. Never mind, 21 Norman. Norman just dropped off the scoring loop. Transponder quit on the 21. Needless to say, no worries, no harm, no foul. He's going to the main event. He's going to take Matt's with him. Dwayne Hicks is going to be there as well. And unofficially in that fourth spot, looks like it will be the 32 car. So the 21 of Thomas Norman. Seems Alabama driver. He's going to the main event. He's in the show. And just like that, that is the final factory pure stock B-Main. Their feature cars are coming out for their hot lap session. 16 of them are already locked in. Then it's hot shot time. And that will conclude the first part of our racing program here on this Saturday afternoon. It'll be all about features after that. So here come those lock-in feature cars. They'll come out, put a little bit of heat in the tires, get a feel for the racetrack, and they will come back in just a little bit for a 20-lap feature on the way. So the fourth car of Adrian Smith, Thunder Raceway up in Kentucky. He is a, uh, a track champion, Thunder Mountain Speedway up in Corbett, Kentucky. Check him out on Facebook. Coming down here to the Ice Bowl right now. 16th starting spot is where he'll be later on in tonight's feature. So cars coming from all over the country, especially here in the southeast, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, all a part of this. George Williamson out of Swainsboro. Shout out to the Swainsboro Bunch. We'll see you all later this year. JJ and the staff. So once again, just a hot lap session for the feature lock-in cars. Jimmy Nolan, fastest right now, 17-209. It'd be hard to beat that 30 car today. Boy, he was fast yesterday. He's running 17-2s. Nathan Page is running 17-3s. He's second fastest. Yellow flank comes out, and that'll do the factory stock feature cars. And with that, I'm going to step aside for a few of these hot shot features. Chase Schaefer. He's going to jump in and get you through these hot shots, the SC DRA hot shots. They've got some B mains, two of them, and their locked in cars will hot lap, and then we'll get ready for those opening ceremonies coming up. All right, thank you very much, Cody. It is a pleasure to be here at Talladega Short Track for the 33rd Annual Ice Bowl. Getting ready to get one of two hot shot B mains underway. Your lineup coming up for B main number one. From, we will start front to back on the pole. Inside pole, the number 58 from Pell City, Alabama. That's Cameron Wirtz. To his outside from Selma, Alabama, will be the number 21 of Walter Nichols. And starting in the second row, Joshua Wood will line up inside of Steve Brown from Cookville, Tennessee. And to back to the third row, we will see Stephanie Tucker and Philip Wallace, Brandon Lucius and Kobe, Colby Paris, Cole McAvoy, and James Wellborn inside row, outside of row number five. Inside row number six, we have Nick Camper, who's outside. We will have Jason Higginbotham from Clanton, Alabama, driving that 3H car. Row number seven, we'll have Wendell Hughes from Anniston, Alabama in the 69. To his outside, you'll have Terry Partridge from Shelby, Alabama in the 34 PJR. 
Josh Childers will be the inside of row number eight in the 113 as we get ready to go. Green flag is underway. As Wirtz leads them past the start finish line, he's got one hot on his tail as we, oh, one up into the wall in turn number one. Didn't catch the number on that car, but we have got one up in turn number one and a yard sale in turn number two. So the first attempt at the start is un.